Enchanting, vital, and inviting, Sitka, Alaska rates as one of the world's finest sport fishing getaways. Home to some of the best and most consistent Chinook salmon fishing anywhere, there's plenty more fishing action waiting for you after you've caught your salmon. This is a rich and productive saltwater bonanza that supports an uncommon abundance and diversity of fishing opportunity. The world-class fishing's only half the story, though. Sitka, the town, is a wonderful retreat. Snow-capped mountains fill the sky against a setting that's so picturesque it seems painted. This is Alaska at its best. Join me, Trey Karskadden, as we tour this beautiful town and sample some of the culture, history, and fabulous fishing that's on tap in this remote but easy to find destination, right here in this week's edition of America's Outdoor Journal. Outdoor Journal, brought to you by Guard Sports, Oshman's, and Sportmart, where your next outdoor adventure begins. Sitka is known for its incredibly consistent salmon fishing, certainly one of the best, if not the best, saltwater salmon fishing areas on the planet. Sitka also delivers tremendous opportunity for a variety of bottom dwelling species fight hard and are equally welcome table food. I mean, it was really almost an imperceptible bite. Yeah, what do we got here? Floundus minimus. Right on. Little Howie. That's a little guy, huh? Yep. Boy, you know, I thought a 50 pounder looked, looked bigger than that, but. <laughs> it's all the perspective. There we go. All right, good job. Get right out of here, yeah. You guys get any shark up here? Uh, we do get some shark. Uh, there's salmon sharks. Yeah. Which is a, a close cousin doesn't. to the, uh, the the great white. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot smaller, of course, and dark dark in color. Um, blues on the surface. And what we have here, actually, it's a ling cod. Oh, you got a linger. Wow, that's a dandy linger. Not a bad ling cod. No, heck no. Yeah, that, that one's probably sitting right at about 35 to 39 inches. You cannot keep them over 40, and actually in this area you can't keep them at all. This is this is closed waters, uh, and you can see that thing's got some good teeth in it. Oh yeah. There he goes. Right. Yep. When you fish in that deep of water and down towards bottom, you're liable to catch anything. What, what depth are we at, Bruce? Yeah, we're in about 170 foot of water. Right. 170 feet of water. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a gravel sandy bottom. There's sand lance. Uh, you'll get cod, ling cod halibut, uh, and of course the salmon are down there quite mm -hmm. often too. They're all feeding on about the same thing. So we like to be down there participating in the food chain. No, he's taking off. Wow. Oh, that jaw is there. Was it probably a 40-year-old fish? Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. 20,000 leagues into the sea. Uh, that's the best part about this saltwater fishing is the fact that you never know what the heck you got on the other end. It's playing around. That's getting pretty close. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. We've got ling and halibut so far. Oh. There it is. Jaws. Oh man. Oh man, do these things fight? I mean, look at the size of that thing. My gosh. Oh. Yeah, that one will go 35, 40 pounds. Think so? Wow. All right. Way to go. Well, thank you very much. That's fun. Those aren't good. Yeah. They're ready to go. All right. Can I make just one more cast? Oh, yeah. 
I know we're losing our light and stuff, but you know, just one more. Yeah, what the heck, we're here. Might as well. Where's my rock? Yeah, the out yellow eye. Okay. Darn good eating subspecies, though. Hold on to that. There we go. Got something decent? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks like a fairly decent one, Steve. Yeah. See, we're in about 450 foot of water. You, you got about 425 left to go. I'm rooting for you. There it is. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, he's still there. Yep. There. Crank. 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 There he is. Crank. Is he there? No. Oh, let's check that. Right. Yep. It's good. <laughs> and now it's in. Settle into the fight. Oh yeah, he's yeah. pulling good. Yeah, we got a couple of. Kind of a different fight than the salmon, isn't it? Yeah. Get yours? All right, yeah. yeah okay, okay, now we got color. Ooh, nice halibut. That's a good eating size right there. That's about a 30. Perfect. Oh, way to go, Steve. Nice, yeah. nice critter. Pop that eye. That's a nice critter. All right. Yeah, there he is. There's some color. That's a, a regular sized little Halley. What we call a uh, chicken or a minimum. I'll take him. I, I don't know what you want to do with that. Yeah, I'll definitely take him. Take I him? If I, if I can take two, you bet. You bet. I love halibut. Yeah. Got that? Oh, yeah. That's a nice fish. Those are my favorite size wise to eat. Very tender. That's why we sometimes only run three rods because there's plenty of action. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's a nice little one. Yeah, that's a nice little chicken. Yeah. A lot of them out here this size. There. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. Yeah, you're getting a bite there, Trey. Looks like a pretty serious one. Yeah, feels fairly serious. Oh, oh but there's another one. Oh, no. <laughs> you just got it down, too. Join the party there, Steve. Critters. Yeah. Hoss. <laughs> oh. Got her, Camp. I got the weight. Oh, yeah. Nice. 25 pounder. Hmm, nice bait. Want to throw it back in? Sure. This next one's yours, Dad. Remember, products we use in the show are available at Guard Sports, Oshman's, and Sport Mart. tricks, filleting your catch is a pretty simple process. We had the good fortune to learn from a local master, Captain Cameron, who showed us the ins and outs of getting our halibut ready for transport home. Well, one of, one of the things I have never done is clean a halibut. And I know that you don't clean them like you do a trout. Right. You actually flay them, but 
you've got a, a, a knife that's maybe, what, seven inches long, and you've got a fish that's much wider than that, so. Looks like it'd be a task, huh? It's a little bit of a trick, I'm sure. Yeah, well, basically it is easier than you, than you would think. Uh, the halibut does have four flays on it, two on the top and two on the bottom. You can see here's his lateral line right here, and basically uh -huh. the, the fish actually outlines a flay for you. His ribs come down here, and there's your lateral line right down the spinal. Sure, you can actually see the, the lateral line right here. It's not like, it's not like a trout. It's uh, you know it's straight. It's right. Like you say that that so that's actually the outline of the of the bones right there. And like most fish, you know, you'll have a, a gut cavity that does cover the whole fish. But here you're just having your top portion here. So basically, from here on behind his actual intral cavity and back, and then your whole top section here is a fillet on both sides. And I'll just rub the gurry off the top of the fish. No matter how clean the fish are, they're still going to have that little slime on there. Uh -huh. That's what halibut are known for. And I'll go ahead and I'll start right up here. And I'll go follow that line all the way down to his tail. And you'll make sure you're all the way down to the bone. You can feel it once yeah, you hit. Yeah, let me get out of your way because okay. I'm, I'm right, right in your way there. There we go. We're going to two critical steps here is just, just follow the bone and you'll just give a little angle, about a 45. And just kind of follow that, follow his spinal cord all the way down, just at a uh -huh. slight angle. And what that does, it just separates your meat and gets you a good start on the fish. Uh -huh. Okay. And you know, unlike most most of your common salmon or any most fish there is, you know, these these fish have a lot thicker bone structure, which allows the knife to do its work itself. Unlike other fish, where you can easily go through the through the bones and you know you've you've messed up a fillet by that time. Sure. But with the halibut, you can start, what we'll do is we'll start and just let the, let the bones do the work here. See the pressure I got on my knife? Uh -huh. And just as long as you're not going too deep, from the always beginning, you want to start slow and then advance to bigger strokes. But there's, there's no reason to take it early. If you can just follow the bone, the play will pretty much do the, the knife will do the work on this. Wow. Go all the way through. A lot of times I just come back through the back side there. You have a nice fillet there. And that's the top half of the top side there. Basically, you want to get here's our spinal cord right here, uh -huh. right over it. You want to get about that angle right now. I believe that's about a 45. You can see my pressure I actually have the knife bent. You don't want to stab into the fish, but you can basically feel there's one point there where you can feel the bones and it's smooth. You're not digging. Just with a long, steady slide, you're actually cutting. And the bones will actually just guide the knife. Deep stroke, just a little bit deeper. And like I was explaining earlier, we do have our cavity there. It's all of our guts. I'll go right to the edge there. Sometimes right. it, it'll take a while to get the feel exactly where you're at, but you know it's better. A lot of the bigger fish too, they'll contain worms around their around their belly cavities on your bigger halibut you'll catch mm -hmm. so a lot of times it's easier just to stay away from it sure so this is all belly cavity right here that's right yes okay now we'll go with the bottom side here again I'll do a little rub off mm -hmm. right there and that just gives your your knife maximum stick where it just actually sticks to the skin instead of sliding to the side so th this is the lateral line here just follows right on down. Correct. Good. And right here, as before, you'll you'll follow that line exactly. Right here, you don't have to. You'll kind of just cut it in half, which I do. I'll start right there. Kind of go off to the side there. Follow that line all the way down the bone. Okay, and after we make our two cuts here, just to kind of separate the meat there, I'll go ahead and start on this bottom, on the bottom portion here. As on the other side, I started and I did the, the long portion first. On this, I'm going to go ahead and start with the cavity. Uh, different, you know, different people have their different techniques, of course, just like anything else. So after your first thousand, you're, you're probably considered an expert. I don't know. Some days are worse than others. A sharp knife always helps. This is definitely a sharp knife. That's the key is, is, a, is to start with a sharp knife. That's right. It makes all the difference in the world. So this is the belly cavity here. This would be the top side of the fish, the bottom side of the halibut. So just like the other side, this is where the, the cavity is. And we don't want to get into that. No. Okay. Definitely not. And I guess, you know, 
process of elimination, you'll find out if that is the belly cavity or not. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and got the bottom strip, and I'm going to go ahead and follow our bones down the top here. Again, to start with, you can take it as slow as you can, and you can get. It doesn't take too long to be a to be an expert at at, at, at halibut. Like I said, their bone structure is just, they're built to, built to flay. I'll go ahead and go under. We're gonna go mm -hmm. to the cheek. Mm -hmm. He has just kind of a cheekbone, it wraps around there. You can follow that bone, keep that angle, just kind of a downward angle, and just run in a circular motion. And you can get that cheek there. A lot of times they'll just peel right off the skin. And that is a, a prime piece of meat there. A little bit of a, a, a stringier texture than your regular fillets, mm -hmm. but Very definitely, definitely a premium, premium piece there. Now I know with salmon, you know, we, we typically leave the skin on the right. fillet. Mm -hmm. um, it actually helps you know, in the cooking process when you're barbecuing or whatever. Um, do you do the same thing with halibut? Uh, some people prefer to. Um, we found that you know, over time, if they are vacuum packed as we do our fish, that a lot of times, over a period of time, the fish will not stay as good as if, if they were, you know, skinned. How if there is a skin, they kind of get a, uh, kind of a, kind of twangs the, the meat a little bit if they are in there for any long periods of time. How do you take the skin off? Well, easy. You always have the table here in your handle. And a major key of flaying these is just having, make sure your handle's off the table and you're mm -hmm. not on top of the table. A lot of people make the mistake of flaying up here and they're missing that, you know, that half inch of meat there when they're when they're trying Good to flay point. the fish. But basically, what we do is just grab the skin. On a bigger fish, sometimes I'll put a hole in here. Mm -hmm. Use this kind of a trigger finger, so where I can have a lot of leverage on the fish. Mm -hmm. If not, I'll leave a little little bit of meat right there just to have more grip there as I do pull the fish. We'll start, and basically, I'll pull the skin. No reason to move the knife at all. Just keep your knife. Mm -hmm stiff and at a 45 degree angle at a slight slight edge down not even moving the blade at all basically just pulling a side to side action there all the way through there it nice is a nice skin if you go too deep on a halibut skin you will you will get the meat here which is kind of a it's like a fat one. layer isn't right it? a little yeah. fat layer so you want to be just above that not mm -hmm. too deep not too not too shallow then you'll be missing your meat of course but. well captain you know Five minutes ago, there's, uh, if you were to put that knife in my hands, there's no way I could have done that job, but now I probably could be considered an expert. After watching you do it, you make it look easy. Well, we got a couple there. You can go ahead and start on them after this if you'd like. Well, I appreciate the offer, and I just might take you up on it next year. Uh, next year, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I thought I was getting a day off today. <laughs> Remember, products we use in the show are available at Guard Sports, Oshman's, and Sport Mart. Sitka is a town rich in history. Totems and native artwork remind visitors that the area's original settlers were from the Tlingit tribe. There's also a strong Russian influence that remembers a time when this was a Russian settlement and was a growing and important northern seaport. There's so much to see in Sitka once you're done fishing. A stroll through the Totem Park is a revealing look at a culture and heritage that's still very much a part of Sitka. The Clinket tribe, the original residents, opened their arms to area visitors. We were fortunate to have earned the privilege of capturing some of the tribal dances and lore that are an indelible and important part of Sitka's character and charm. In Sitka, wildlife is everywhere. Eagles are abundant and so are so many other animal species that you're left in complete awe with breaching whales and glimpses of animals that routinely show themselves at nearly every turn. As guests of Bruce Gipple and Horizons West Guide Service, our visit to Sitka was particularly excellent. Bruce treated us as he does all his visitors like royalty. They showed us the sights, took us fishing, and treated us to the very best Sitka has to offer. 
I certainly recommend a trip to their lodge to gain the full flavor of the area. Of all the places I've had the good fortune to visit, Sitka is a favorite. It's filled with a majestic poetry that escapes adequate description and has a unique and vital warmth that's cleansing and soothing all at once. Sitka is what a vacation should be. A real break from the workaday world where you can enjoy adventure, find yourself, and bathe in a setting that's relaxing and exhilarating. It's a place I'll visit time and again, and I'm sure I'll discover something new and exciting each time I return. I'm Trey Karskadden for America's Outdoor Journal. Keep a tight line, and thanks for watching.